Oh, hey, uh, you. Uh, I, of course, am not Ian Sands, and this, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. Maybe your favorite place for Adobe tutorials. Haircut still looks great. <laughs> Wearing a hat today because I don't feel like dealing with it. Got a lot of comments on the last video on how to do the lens flare effect for some reason. We're not gonna do that today. Gotcha. Today, we're gonna be doing a super cool website animation tutorial just like this. I feel like every time I do that effect, I'm always getting people asking how I did it. How do you do the animation? How do you make it 3D? How do you make the thing type out in the search bar? How do you get... We're gonna cover all that today. You've come to the right place. Website animation tutorial in Adobe After Effects. Open up After Effects, because we're getting started. All right, After Effects is open. First thing you do is save your project. Click save, and now we're ready to rock and roll. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is figure out what website you wanna animate. In the example, I did youtube.com and I'm searching for learn how to edit stuff, so we're gonna do that today, but you guys can do whatever you want. It works the same for pretty much anything. So I've got the front page of YouTube here, and on a Mac, uh, I really don't know how you do this on PC, but on a Mac, you can hit Shift Command 3, and it takes a screenshot of the entire screen. So basically, once you take a screenshot of the whole screen, you're gonna wanna scroll down and still keep whatever is in the bottom here, like in frame, and I'll show you why in a minute. So hit Shift Command 3 again, and then we'll go down here, and we'll just do one more, just like that. And now we're done. Now I'm gonna come back over to After Effects. I'm going to import those screenshots into After Effects. And there we go. Now I'm gonna come up to here, composition, new composition, 1920, and I'm gonna set the height to 4,000. I'm gonna drop in my first image onto the timeline, and I'm just gonna zoom in here, and I'm going to start resizing it to fit the width of this composition. So just like that, looking good so far. And then I'm gonna come down here to the bottom of my first image. I'm gonna grab the mask tool, and I'm just going to mask out the bottom. And if you have text, it's best to put the mask through some text, and I'll show you why as soon as we do the next layer of this. So I'm gonna set the mask to go through dabbing every 60 seconds right there, and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna change it to subtract, so it gets rid of that. And now we are ready to drop in our second web page image right underneath, and we're gonna hit S for scale. We're gonna scale it down to 63.5, because that's we know that that's what that is. Hit P for position, and we're gonna to go to 980. You really only want the horizontal position here, and then the vertical we're gonna do right now. So now I'm gonna come up, I'll be able to line this up so easily because it is text and I can tell right when it's exactly perfect. So we're gonna do the same thing down here. We're gonna mask out the bottom portion and I'm gonna go right through this live recommended channel for you text. And we're gonna change this to subtract. And now we're going to drop in our last image. Same thing again, scale. And on the position, the horizontal position, we're gonna go 980. All right, there's our text that we want to match up. And right about there looks good. Nice, everything's matching up great. We have a big, long web page going on here for YouTube, and that is all that we're gonna do for those three screenshots. Whatever website you're trying to animate, just make sure that you line everything up so it's just a long continuation of a web page, so then that way when we do the scroll animation, we can scroll the entire thing and it can be fluid and it'll look really good. So once we've got that done, I'm gonna highlight all of my layers and I'm going to hit Shift Command or Shift Control C to pre-compose it, and I'm gonna call this YouTube Page. Then I'm gonna come up here to Composition, New Composition, I'm gonna start a new comp 1920 by 1080 now, and 10 seconds is fine for this, and now we've got a brand new composition, and I'm just gonna drop this YouTube page straight into here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll up to the top where I know that I want my web page to be. Now, for the animation, if I actually go back to youtube.com and I scroll, I can see here that this entire left bracket thing just kind of stays the same and then you're scrolling within it down here. So I'm gonna to wanna to mimic that animation exactly so it actually looks like a real YouTube page. So let's come in here, I'm gonna duplicate this, mute the bottom layer underneath it, and I'm just gonna come in here with a box, a mask, and I am going to mask this whole thing out just like that, and I'm gonna come and change this to subtract. So now we have this left angle thing kind of going on and we will do our scroll animations down here. So now when I trigger this layer underneath, I can now take this and I can free scroll it. When, once we actually animate it, it obviously will look much better. And now it actually looks like the regular YouTube page where this kind of scrolls in between here. Ha ha! All right, so let's say we want this scroll animation to last for two seconds. So I'm gonna to come to two seconds and I'm going to set a position keyframe here. And I'm gonna go back to the beginning of my page and I'm just going to 
scroll this thing like all the way down here. Hey, look at that guy. Look at that. Looking good. I'm gonna highlight my keyframes here and I'm going to set these to easy ease. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to jump into the graph editor, which is, I wanted it to be part of my other After Effects series of tutorials, but we're gonna do it for this one because it is important. So this little button up here in the corner, it says graph editor, we're gonna click on that. And basically what this allows you to do is custom tailor the keyframes to speed up or slow down or like give it more smoothness or less smoothness or any of that stuff. So it's kind of important, so pay attention. For this down here, I'm gonna right click on position and go to separate dimensions, which will allow me to just focus on the easy ease of my Y animation. X and Y, you remember from middle school, X is horizontal, Y is vertical. We're doing a vertical scroll. So that's why we are using the Y curve. Now, basically what this curve says is when the animation starts and when the animation ends, but what's actually happening in between. So if I drag this over, basically what it's saying is for the website to start scrolling really slow, then scroll super fast. And then if I pull this even out farther to scroll slow again. So now if I play this slow, fast, slow. So now we've got that part looking spiffy. The next thing we're going to do is come up to the search bar. So I'm going to click off of the graph editor here. And what I want to do is actually get rid of where it says search. So I'm actually going to duplicate this top layer here. And I'm just going to draw a mask over here in this white part, delete the first mask. And then I'm going to just move the position of this over to cover the word search. So now we have a blank search box, come up to my text layer, click down in here, and I'm just gonna make a capital I. And I'm just gonna grab the side of this and just shrink it just a bit. And I'm going to put it right in here. And then this will be our blinking cursor that we're gonna use to just have blink in there nice and easy. Alt T for transparency or opacity. And I'm gonna hold the command or control key and go over one, two, three, four, five keyframes. And I'm gonna set another keyframe. Come back to my first one, set it at 70. And we're gonna set our last one at zero. And then one, two, three, four, five keyframes. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste. So now we have this little cursor that's just blinking up in our search bar, and that will be used to initiate our search into YouTube. I'm gonna zoom out here, and I know that my website animation scroll ends right here where these little marks are. So I'm gonna come over a couple frames here, and I'm gonna come up to our search bar, and I'm just going to get a new text layer and write learn how to edit stuff. Very nice. And with my playhead still where I want the animation to start, I'm gonna come up to effects and presets. I'm going to type in type, and I'm gonna drop the animate in typewriter animation right on top of my text. The text disappears. Click on your layer, hit U, and it will drop down your keyframe animations. And now you'll see that it's actually typing out very nicely. So I'm gonna shrink this animation down from five seconds just to four seconds here. So now this types in just like that. And while it's typing in, we want our cursor to move along with the text. So I will set a position keyframe on my cursor and an end keyframe where the animation ends on my cursor. And I'm just going to drag this over while holding down shift so it will drag horizontally without moving vertically. And then I will hit option and the right bracket to trim the layer down. And now that's it for our little blinky blink. The next thing I would do is go over to Google and type in cursor vector and go to images and you're gonna wanna grab a random cursor that has the transparent background via Google. So go ahead and just drag it onto your desktop or your folder or wherever you're keeping all the information for this project. We're gonna bring that into After Effects and I'm gonna drop that straight into my timeline. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is scale it down to a realistic size. So uh, like eight or 10 usually works. Might have to zoom in here to see it. And basically what I want is I want this cursor to just be kind of drifting up the page until my animation stops. So I'm gonna hit a uh, position keyframe there and I'm gonna go to where my scrolling animation stops and I'm just gonna throw this up here so it lands kind of near the home button, right about there. So if I play this, you'll see that the little cursor arrow is actually just kind of drifting. I'm also gonna turn on the motion blur for the layers that are act actively moving. So for my cursor and for my scroll, I'm gonna turn on the motion blur and then turn the motion blur on for your comp, which will now give it that nice motion blur effect as if you are scrolling fast. Now to save on some CPU, you can turn it off for now, but before you export this, you're gonna to wanna to turn that back on so you get the nice realistic motion blur. 
And the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make the web page go 3D. So that's very easy to do. All you have to do is select all the layers in your composition by selecting the top one, scrolling down, holding shift, hitting the bottom one. We're going to pre-compose that as well. Shift command or shift control C. I'm gonna call this YouTube animation. It will pre-compose it into one layer. I'm gonna click on the 3D icon here in After Effects. And now I'm gonna find where I want my 3D to start. So maybe a couple frames over, I'm gonna hit Alt S, P and R for scale, position and rotation. And I'm gonna come back, ooh, something's going on outside with some sirens. And I'm gonna come back 12 keyframes. And I'm gonna set them all here. And I'm gonna come here. And I'm just gonna scale this up. I'm gonna move it down and I'm gonna swivel it on the Y rotation, just like that. I'm gonna line this up nicely where I want it, and you can see that up here we're kind of losing some, uh, some screen real estate, so I'm gonna adjust the Z rotation, and then I'm gonna bring the position back up so it lines up flush with the top of the frame here, so I'm not getting any alpha layer channel happening. Just kind of swooping in there. While it's doing its 3D thing, I just kind of want it to drift to the left a little bit and also scale up just slightly. So now if we watch this, boom, and it just kind of drifts nicely. So as soon as the text finishes typing, I want the mouse to just kind of come up here and click on the little search thing. So I'm gonna double click onto my pre-comp, go to my cursor, and I'm gonna set a position keyframe here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why not? Eight keyframes. It's gonna come up to the search bar right here. Then as soon as it reaches there, I'm gonna hit the scale and go one, two, scale, one, two, scale, and then set my middle one down to half of what it is currently, so down to four. And that will give me the nice little click animation there. And then that will be the end of my animation. So, website scrolls in, whoop, learn how to edit stuff, click, and then we're out. So now the last thing that you're gonna to wanna to do here is come over to Google again and type in computer screen texture. And you're just gonna wanna grab anything that looks like, I don't know, maybe something like this. Anything that looks like a computer screen, basically. Drag that onto the desktop, and I'm going to import that into my After Effects project here. I'm gonna double click on YouTube animation, and I'm going to drop that computer screen texture right over top of everything here. And I'm going to scale it up like that. And I'm going to come down here to toggle switch modes and set the blend mode to overlay. And now if I zoom in here, you'll see that it's kind of giving it a, a texture effect over the whole thing. And I'm just gonna drop the opacity down so it's barely visible. So now that we've got that going for us, we can turn all these keyframes down here to easy ease keyframes. And we can come back over to the graph editor and we can start smoothing some of this stuff out. So as far as position, I'm gonna right click on that and go to separate dimensions. So then I can get some nice uh, separation of keyframes here. And now let's check out what we've got. All right, click off graph editor. And I think the last thing that I did was I, make the, I made the whole thing come in from top of frame. So I'm gonna set a position keyframe here and go over one, two, three, four, five, six. Set another position keyframe here. And then I'm just gonna pull this up on the Y out of frame, just like that. Remembering to turn back on our motion blur. And now let's see what we've got. Nice, that's looking really good. Now there's a lot of complicated things happening here. You have the like scroll within web page thing happening here. You got the little cursor blink going on up in the search bar up here. Then you got the text animating in while also swinging into 3D. You have the computer screen texture happening on the web page itself. And it's just kind of drifting real nice with this little mouse movement here. And then it goes and clicks on the search bar. Now, if you do all of this combined with sound design, it actually makes for a really cool and unique animation. It didn't take us very long to do this, guys. Again, it's thinking about all the tools you have in your toolbox within After Effects and then finding ways to make it work. I recommend going and playing with the graph editor a lot. Kind of see what you can get away with and what moving keyframes on either side or both of them will actually do to your animation. It actually makes the physics of what you're trying to do seem more realistic. Part of motion design and part of doing this kind of stuff is understanding physics and how much you want to exaggerate physics, right? So I have this little ball uh, that I used to massage my feet. Don't worry about it. These are great, by the way. If you don't have one, I recommend getting them. Um, so if a ball bounces, it will bounce half the height and then half the height and then half the height and it will kind of do, right, one of these. 
knowing how to do that in After Effects to mimic real life things is kind of important for motion design. Or if you know that you want to exaggerate that, where a ball comes down and like doesn't bounce, right? So it's just boom. Or if it comes down and bounces as high as it started and then comes back down and like bounces, you can do whatever you want, but you have to make that creative determination yourself, but knowing how to do it and knowing the tools in your toolbox is equally important. All right, guys, down in the video description below, I have included all the assets that I've used for this video, as well as the After Effects project. So go ahead and open up my After Effects project, take a look at everything inside and see what we did today so you can have a better understanding of how to do this for your own project. I hope that this was helpful to all the people that always ask me how to do this damn animation. Now you know, my secret's out there. You know how to do it. Stop asking me how to do it. Thank you. Keep the comments coming, keep the messages coming, keep the suggestions for future videos coming. I really do appreciate it. Follow me on social media at Nadia and Sands. And if you haven't seen last week's video, go ahead and check out last week's video and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Don't miss any of these lessons. Learn how to do cool stuff with editing in post-production. My name is Nadia and Sands. This has been Learn How to Edit Stuff and thank you for coming.